I'm Caleb from the Blanco channel, and today I want to ask a question. Is paying for a D&D &D session reasonable? $25 per player is the fee that's getting thrown around a lot nowadays. I want to lay out a couple things. First, my background. Second, my opinion on people monetizing the hobby. And then I want to talk about the history of the paid DM. The very recent history, in fact. I am very biased about this issue. I've always worked, and despite that, I've always been dirt poor. I was ignorant. Uh, I worked a lot of uh, poverty wages, and I also worked a lot of unpaid hours uh, I was never taught the concept of work smart, not hard. So, charging money for one of the few things that got me through awful periods of my life. One of the few activities that uh, I got any kind of socialization from. Um, the normalization of monetizing that activity is just personally deplorable to me. I, I just, I hate the idea of it. The argument is that the DM deserves to get paid a living wage for the work that they do. But just do the simple thing. Look around the table. There's always going to be more players than there are DMs. If you charge $25 for a session of D&D, then a person in a similar situation to what I was in will probably not pay. Let me be real. If you charged $5 for a session of D&D, uh, back in the day, there's no way I would have taken that. Uh, that was a $5 foot long back in the day. <laughs> that was toll booth fees. Uh, I mean, it's just, no, I just wouldn't have gotten into the hobby at all. Second point, I want to make it very clear. I'm totally okay with people trying to make their hobby their job. Uh, I've met so many talented people. Uh, and I was lucky to meet those people. And I don't begrudge anybody with the ability to make a living because all the people that I know uh, have put so much work into doing that. And they provide, you know, services and ideas that are worth real money. So when talking about people who put so much work into the hobby, uh, obviously playing a game with those people, that, that would be something that would be worth real value. So I get that. But unfortunately, the very toxic issue of parasocial relationships exists nowadays. So there's going to be scenarios where people are going to be paying somebody uh, to play a game with them just because they have this false idea that there's this personal relationship there and they got to help that person out. I myself earn money by monetizing these videos. And anyone who gives me one dollar on Patreon is part of my real family. <laughs> I don't feel bad about that. And I think I should be earning a lot more money so I can actually cover the costs of running this channel. But a few years ago, I was running a game and a player sent my Roll20 account $30 in credit. Immediately, I contacted Roll20 and refunded it. It just felt wrong. I really could have used that credit, but it felt wrong. <laughs> People gather on corners of the internet like Reddit and think they're doing something noble by wanting to have the DMs have their time compensated. But the issue is, I enjoy my work as a DM. It doesn't really seem that separated from the fun that I have as a player. It's a collaborative social activity. And it's one of the few social activities I've had in my life. It's a free time activity. That's what most D&D games should be. People that know each other or want to get to know each other Playing a game, money complicates things. It's as simple as that. As soon as you have a transaction where somebody is paying for a service, then expectations override anything else. Another tangent, it really stinks if somebody's in the position where they feel like paying for a game is the only way that they can experience a game. I think there are places online where you can find games that are accepting new players. I've talked about in the past of uh, pitfalls where in discords, people are trying to find people to, 
to get involved in games that have like ugh, microtransactions and donation schemes and stuff like that. So they, they claim to be looking for uh, players, but really they're just looking for people who might throw in a couple dollars uh, for their little funding thing. Those did exist a couple years ago. I'm not sure how prevalent they are now. And again, I do want to shout out places like the Roll20 forums where you, you can find games where it seems like most people actually are just looking for players for their game. And also, there's issues with fees with physical locations. A lot of game stores are no longer providing a free space for D&D games. There's table fees now. I really think the stores that think that they're going to be uh, subsidizing their space by charging for fees, I really think that those places need to concentrate on allowing new people uh, to get into the hobby and providing uh, free games for people that are new to D&D. Overall, if any of those people are interested in the hobby then they're going to spend way more money in the store setting up their hobby, buying dice, buying other books and stuff. And that's going to generate way more value than, like, table fees. That's a slightly different conversation, though. Uh, let's get back to paid DMs. Years ago, there was an online Rolling Stone article about paid DMs. And it was all about how great they were. A complete puff piece. Not available for free anymore, but the Wayback Machine uh, remembers. For some, a professional dungeon master can be the difference between a fun time and a boring slog through a fantasy landscape. Then, right after that, there was a player who recounted what happened in a game with that same DM from the Rolling Stone article. They were far too even-handed with their description of what happened, which makes sense considering how much clout this particular paid DM had back then. And it was very clear to me that this guy was just really bad at running games for strangers. That would be something I would assume a professional dungeon master would be proficient at. If this scenario had played out in any other transaction, then it would have been correctly labeled as upselling. Offer the buyer one service at one fee, and once they're locked in, strongly try to sell them on a much more expensive service. Literally, wring as much money as you possibly can out of the buyer. In any other sort of transaction, it would have been correctly labeled a scam. That dungeon master, the same dungeon master from the Rolling Stone article, the same dungeon master who had the poor review of their paid service, that dungeon master was also one of the first D&D YouTubers who was financially supported full-time by their community. It also turns out that they tried to hurt the fledgling D&D YouTube community back then by pulling Every dirty trick in the book. Truly reprehensible stuff. I should know, because I've been on YouTube since 2006. Maybe a lot of people weren't around back then. Maybe a lot of people don't remember. He has since deleted all of his public online media, but uh, interesting enough, kept that Patreon going to pay for his online media that doesn't exist anymore? Ain't that interesting. I just kind of expect everybody to know stuff like this. But I'm starting to realize, like, I, I'm probably one of the only people who actually connect all the dots here. My point is that monetizing Dungeon Masters is going to reward certain types of people much more. It's going to attract certain types of people whose motivation is clearly more about money than the hobby. So one thing I want to make really clear is that the issues that crop up here are inevitable. This scenario is not the exception to the rule. This is what happens when you put money into something like D&D. These are the sorts of people that are going to take up that job. This will be a common scenario when you add money into the equation. 
That's my entire point. It's no coincidence that the first paid DM who got so much positive press was that guy. But hey, I'm just talking about what I actually saw happen in the recent past. Draw your own conclusions. There are many new paid DM services out there. Uh, maybe people have had good experiences with them during the quarantine, maybe? Uh, let me know in the comments if you have had good experiences uh, recently with paid DMs. Speaking of those new companies, a massive sidebar, if you will. Just something to go out on a positive note. Uh, I saw a video from Haley Whipjack from the little guy's new YouTube channel. It's about character voices in D&D, and it's very good. You should check out that video, and then watch the video with Talison Jaffe, where he talks about how to come up with random NPCs on the fly. I think those two videos really complement each other nicely. Links are gonna be below. Anyways, I also saw Whipjack in a Facebook ad for one of those new paid DM companies. No hate towards Whipjack at all. It's just really funny, and uh, someone is clearly selling my personal data to some uh, company for some amazingly narrow targeted ads. But clearly the algorithm completely misunderstood my feelings on the subject. I am not an idiot. I offer free games online, and players don't show up. Or they show up and clearly don't care about playing the game. Uh, charging one dollar per player would actually weed out most of the bad players charging 25 bucks would absolutely weed about just about any problem player that would want to play in my game uh it would also unfortunately probably weed out a lot of the younger people uh that i have run games for in the past people that i know have gone on to do their own miniature painting their own uh, writing for RPGs, people that made uh, the hobby their own. And yeah, I didn't get my life made easier monetarily, but I'm not going to lie, it feels good to know that in some very small part, I helped people get into a hobby that I love. It is a complicated issue I would really like to hear what you all think in the comments below. No hate towards anybody specific, please. If you got ripped off by somebody, then leave a negative review somewhere else. Please participate in the conversation when this topic comes up here, but don't mention anyone specific because YouTube is awful. On this website, you can rip off entire communities. You can take advantage of people monetarily. But what you can't do is call people out specifically on this platform. Because that would be bullying. And that's worse than... <laughs> because that would be wrong. Anyways, I hope you learned something about the recent history of paid DMs and why I have misgivings about the topic. I am fully willing to have my opinion changed. So if you have any information that you think would be helpful about this topic, uh, yeah, just let me know. Run free games for new players to grow the hobby. Treat D&D like a social experience with friends and people that you want to become friends with. And really reconsider the whole fee thing. Because fees really only help one person, and there are a lot of people around the table.